Well, hello and welcome to this uh, adult Bible study session for September the 27th. Uh, I'm in a little different location. It's Tuesday, actually, the 22nd, and uh, it is such a beautiful day, so cool and mild outside. I thought I would just do it here from my home, just on my back porch. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Sixth Commandment, which is uh, you shall not murder. So if you want to grab your Bible, we're actually going to be looking at several passages of Scripture. Um, so before we do that, let's let's pray, and then we'll uh, we'll dive in, okay? God, thank you for this day, uh, for the beauty of it. I pray that you would teach us through your Word, and uh, Lord, as we explore it, that we would um, see something of value in other people. We would see the value of other people. And we would uh, treat each other differently because of what we see in your word today. So help us to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, uh, for the last few weeks we've been going through the, the Ten Commandments. And uh, we, we made the turn last week to the commandments that um, speak to our relationship with other people. And I've been trying to teach you this song, and actually last week at the end, and I guess I'll do that again this week too, I, I didn't even really think about it until I was done with it last week to put the song at the end, uh, the kid's song that I've been teaching you. Um, so it'll be at the end of this one, maybe every one of them here on out, just so that uh, you can listen to that if you if you want to. Uh, but anyway, here here goes this uh, this song. Love God first. Love God only, love God's name and day, and honor your parents. Don't kill, don't break your vows, don't steal and don't lie. Don't covet what somebody else has. So that song will be at the end if you want to listen to it, or uh, maybe listen to it with your, your child, or maybe your grandchild or something. Uh, it, it was a fun song to do. So we're in Exodus Chapter 20, Exodus 20, 13 says, You shall not murder. Um, hmm. Okay. We're done, right? I guess I can just get up and go over here to the camera and uh, just turn it off because, well, maybe not so fast. Maybe you're saying, Well, Craig, I hadn't, I hadn't murdered anybody. So, I'm good on this. Um, not really. And let's see why. Let's explore this a little bit more. Obviously, um, probably most people who are watching this Bible study session have never killed anybody. Although there may be some who have been in the armed services and who have. Um, there are people who have, who have struggled with that, even being in the armed services and and knowing the uh, the mandate and the mission they had in front of them, the moral obligation, uh, the moral moral justification, but uh, it's still something that bothers them. Uh, but most of us probably that are watching this haven't. We hadn't killed anybody. We don't have to worry about some kind of justification for that, um, or even to deal with that the the taking of another life, to deal with, with the consequences of that. So. Um, let's, let's dive into this a little bit and uh, see if we can see maybe some reasons for this commandment, uh, kind of the underpinnings and the, the backdrop for why this commandment would have been given in the first place. So uh, let's, let's talk about and think about murder for just a moment. Now murder is, is different from just killing someone. I, I would say that at the outset, although we're not going to dive into that. Uh, in depth, but murder is the taking of innocent life without regard to any just cause. Uh, obviously we have a military that that takes the lives of people who are in opposition uh, to to the truth, to God's ways. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, I know this is maybe not not a hundred percent been the case, but hopefully the um, the missions of our military are underpinned and rooted in a just cause. Uh, but again, that's, that's not exactly where I want to take this. Uh, I want to look at the why not to murder 
um, which is obviously a, a different subject, a different subject matter than than the military uh, experience and, and that side of things. But if you will, turn to Genesis, the very first chapter, all right? Genesis 1 um, gives us the underpinnings, the root for this command about why we shouldn't murder. Uh, look at Genesis 1 and verse 26 and 27. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then if you go just a few chapters over, Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6, um, we get this, this language once again. Um, it says, Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God has God made man. Um, so, everyone who has been born and is living, or has lived, or will live, has been made in the image of God. All right? So, there is an intrinsic value that every human being has because they are made in the image of God. They are His creation. They're His. Whether or not they've accepted Him as Savior or not, they are still His creation. So, if we take a life, murder someone, the underlying reason not to do that is not just because God said it, but because we are made in the image of God. There is uh, a, an enormous value to every human life because it's made in the, in the image of God. <clears throat> and so, as, uh, as we look through some, some verses that relate to us being made in the image of God at the outset, and also the fact that God wants us, since we are flawed, since we're human and have this sin nature, he wants us to be conformed back to His image, to be restored, might be another way to say it. Uh, the Garden of Eden was perfect for a little while, but then it was stained with sin. And so, in a way, God has been working to bring mankind back to Himself. Every creature, excuse me, every person is made in the image of God from the outset but they have a sin nature, and He continuously calls us back to Himself to conform to that image. <clears throat> Let's look at a couple of, of scriptures in the New Testament. Let's take a look at Colossians 3, verses 9 and 10. Colossians 3, 9 and 10. Now, if you need just a moment to find that, just pause the video and find it, and then, and then start it back. It says, Do not lie to each other, since you've been taken off since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. So, I mean, we shouldn't... There's a lot of things we shouldn't do to each other or treat each other in certain ways simply because we're made in the image of God. Now, murder is, is the pinnacle of what not to do to each other. But in this particular context, it says don't even lie to each other. Why? Because you are being renewed in knowledge in the image of your Creator. Since people are made in the image of God, that forms a lens to look through in how we treat other people. And so, not only does He want us to treat other people uh, with value because they are made in His image, but He wants us to conform to His image as well as an individual. Uh, look at Romans uh, 12, 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, be transformed. Transformed into what? 
into a, uh, an image or into a person who is conforming more and more to the image of God, to who He is, to His character, to His person. So Romans 12, 1 and 2 and Colossians 3, 9 and 10 talk about us, um, our task and our goal of being conformed to His image. The fact that others are made in the image of God gives them their value and it's extreme. It's extreme value. A value so great to God that He was willing to die for all of us. So, okay, I told you earlier that uh, you might be, have been saying, well, I, you know, I hadn't killed anyone. Uh, you just told me why I shouldn't do what I haven't done. So you haven't killed anyone, that's true. You haven't murdered anyone. But we need to be thinking about how we treat each other uh, so that we don't even start down the path of um, treating each other in ways that lead to murder. Um, just because you haven't murdered somebody doesn't mean that you, you, uh, you might be and might have been called a murderer by the very word of God even though you haven't murdered someone. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about what, uh, what Jesus said um, a couple of times in, in two different ways. Uh, we have the potential, and we do this. I mean, I've done it. We have this uh, this potential, and even sometimes the um, the tendency to get angry with other people for a number of reasons. Sometimes because they don't they don't think like us, they don't look like us, they don't whatever. They're different in a number of ways. Maybe they're a complete, as our pastor was talking about this past Sunday, he was talking about how people who, you're either pro-Christ or anti-Christ, anti-Christ. There are some people who have the spirit of the antichrist. And so, uh, whether it be those people or just people that we don't get along with, it's, it's easy sometimes to be angered, and anger can turn to hate, and hate, and it's, um, if, if it is taken to its logical end, results in murder. And so that's why we have at least a, a couple of, of, of things here, a couple of verses that caution us about even going down the road to murder because of the way we treat people in the area of anger and in, in the area of hate. Let's look at Matthew 5, verses 21 through 24. Matthew 5, 21 through 24. You've heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, this is Jesus talking, that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Now, let's just... For a moment, um, there are those who are watching this potentially who when, when you read that at face value say, wait a minute, I thought Jesus got angry. He's telling me I can't be angry. There's a difference in Jesus' anger and this kind of anger. right? What did Jesus do? He did this, if you look at, at Matthew 21, Mark 11, Luke 19, John chapter 2, all the Gospels record when Jesus was angered in the temple and basically drove out those people. It was a righteous anger because they were doing something against God. He was cleansing the temple. So he had a, a righteous anger that um, he acted on. He acted on it. If you, I can't remember exactly which one of the passages. I didn't look it up. I just thought of this in this moment. But he took the time to kind of get the cords he was going to use together and braid those and then drive those people out. Um, it was a righteous anger. God is justified in his righteous anger. And to pronounce and execute judgment on his people. He has that right. Now, what is this anger talking about? Well, it says, uh, 
anger with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says raka. Now, what does that mean? What is raka? Well, it means empty head or uh, it's a belittling anger where you devalue someone. You, you call someone a name, you, you devalue them and dehumanize them by calling them names. And you, you basically um, do the opposite of what every person uh, has as far as value. You devalue them when the truth is they have in, uh, intrinsic and an enormous value because they're made in the image of God, which we've already talked about. So this raka is to basically the belittling anger that would say, you empty head, you idiot. Um, it is that kind of um, sometimes self-promoting anger that we can have toward people. And so Jesus said, um, you're subject to judgment if you've been angry in that way. You ever been angry in that way? I have. That's a path down the road to murder. Uh, those emotions and the way I handle that's very important. How we handle anger is huge. It's very important how we handle anger. Anger can motivate us to confront a truth and do it the right way. Anger can motivate us to confront a truth in the very wrong way. Or just to confront thing, something that we don't like. It's not even the truth. We just decide we're going to confront it and also do it in the wrong way. We are going down the path of where the path ends is murder. Another verse of scripture I'd like to call your attention to is 1 John. 1 John, okay. Chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. So, 1 John, chapter 2. Verses 9 through 11. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there's nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in darkness. He does not know where he's going but because the darkness has blinded him. Sounds like that's going down the road that leads to murder. That kind of hate. But let's go a little bit further. Just go one chapter over to 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. We know that we have passed from, life, excuse me, from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. Hate. To hate your brother. I'm reminded of a movie that came out several years ago called Remembering, or Remember the Titans. And it's a story of, of uh, black and white relations, and in particular, um, two football players, one white, one black, who didn't like each other, didn't respect one another, uh, didn't value one another, uh, and they didn't, they didn't get along because they were different. They couldn't understand one another's differences, despised each other. But later on in the movie, the, uh, the white athlete, Bertier, says, I was just hating my brother. And he calls this other black football player his brother. Hating your brother is serious. It's very serious. Because we're human. Where does the hate end? Where does the hate end? Where does the anger end? In my opinion, the anger leads to hate. The hate leads to murder. This is the path. This is what we're cautioned against. And so you might ask the question, well, who is our brother? Because in the context of this, we might think, well, really he's talking about uh, First John here. We're talking about other Christians. Really? It's okay to hate people who are not Christians? It's okay to hate... Non-believers? Is that what the Bible teaches? I think it tells us that we should show the love of Christ to the world regardless whether they are part of the family of God or not. So I think our brother is kind of like the, the Good Samaritan passage that talks about who is our neighbor. Um, 
everyone who is living and breathing on this earth right now I think could legitimately be called our brother or our sister because we're all a part of the human race. They're all made in the image of God. That's this overarching umbrella that, uh, that we all belong to because we're humans. We're people. So I think we can also, if you, if you think with me, I'm not going to uh, read all these passages, but I'm sure you would agree with me that the Bible tells us to love one another. It tells us to love our brother. It tells us to love our neighbor. And it tells us to love our enemies. So when we talk about loving our brother, we're talking about, yes, our biological family. Yes, our church family. But we're also talking about mankind. And the fact that this despising, belittling anger is a pathway to murder. Hate, hating our brother, is a pathway to murder. As a matter of fact, the Bible calls us a murderer, a murderer in that moment when we're doing that and when we're acting that way and when we treat people in that manner. So this command not to murder, uh, on the surface, we feel pretty good about it because we hadn't murdered anybody, hopefully. But if you dive into that a little bit, and you look into what Jesus said and into the New Testament, you realize that this has a lot to do with how we treat people, how we view them, how we speak to them, how we act toward them, our emotion and our attitude, the hate, the anger, all these things are in this realm of murder, the murder of our brothers and sisters. It might not be physical, but in a way, I think sometimes we, we justify our anger, we justify our hate because of someone else's belief. When really our anger and our hate should have nothing to do with that. It doesn't have a place for the Christian. And so that's something we need to wrestle with. You shall not murder, but even if you're angry in that belittling way where you devalue someone, you could be accused of being a murderer. And if you hate someone, if you hate your brother, you can be accused of being a murderer. And that's the truth of the Bible. So, that Exodus twenty thirteen command, you shall not murder. Maybe it's a little deeper than what we would have thought. I'm glad I didn't go cut off the camera to begin with, huh? This really spoke to me. And I hope it will speak to you as well as you think about how you treat other people. hope you've enjoyed this session and I hope... Uh, uh, as you think and pray through that, that uh, we live a little bit differently from this moment on by the way we treat others. Next is a kid's song, so enjoy. <laughs>